Welcome back to Hands-On with Reinforcement Learning. This section is Model Free Prediction and Control with Temporal Difference. In this section, we're going to take a look at number one, visualizing temporal difference and the algorithm SARSA in grid world in your browser. We're going to construct our own OpenAI gym environment, a very useful skill to have. I'm going to construct an environment called Windy Grid World. Number three, we're going to build a control algorithm using SARSA to find the optimal epsilon greedy policy. And then number four, we're going to visualize the outcomes of the SARSA algorithm. This video, we're going to talk about visualizing temporal difference in SARSA in Grid World in your browser. In this video, we're going to take a look at Temporal Difference versus Monte Carlo, and then visualizing temporal difference algorithms in your browser. So what is temporal difference? Temporal difference blends Monte Carlo and dynamic programming. So very much like Monte Carlo, we don't need a model of the environment. And like dynamic programming, we actually learn from other estimates in other states instead of learning from other fixed or optimal values. The key idea of temporal difference is we take an action, any action, we see what rewards come back, we look at what next states resulted from that action, and then we update the value estimates immediately. Let's contrast that to Monte Carlo. In Monte Carlo, you experience the whole episode, and then you look at all the rewards after the state is first seen. You average all the rewards, and then that's the value of your state. Whereas in temporal difference, you simply look at the difference in time steps, hence temporal difference, and then you use that to kind of nudge your value estimates or your policy estimates slightly in hopes that if you nudge them enough in the right directions over time, you nudge them all the way to the optimal policy. So let's look at an example. Imagine if you were driving home from the office and you have to pass a tunnel. Let's say that you have some current estimates before you're at the office, you are thinking ahead, and your estimate is it takes me 0 to 15 minutes to go to the tunnel, and then from the tunnel it takes another 15 minutes, i.e. 30 minutes in total to get home. So the way that I'm going to illustrate the example is the actual trip time is going to be here, what happens after the actual trip time is known between a Monte Carlo update and a temporal difference update is illustrated in the difference between this column and that column. Let's assume that it's actually not a very good day and it actually took us 25 minutes to go from the office to the tunnel. In the Monte Carlo update regime, it's not going to do anything because the episode hasn't ended yet. You haven't seen everything from the episode. There's nothing to do. So I've put a not applicable here. And then when we actually go through the tunnel and then reach home, we're actually taking the expected amount of time from the tunnel to home, we can see that the actual trip actually took 40 minutes. So at this point, because the episode has ended, as you can recall our Python code from last section, Monte Carlo then takes an average of all the returns, i.e. here, and then updates the estimate with averages. Contrast that to temporal difference. If we think back to when we just reached the tunnel, and we have seen that we, it took us 25 minutes to get to the tunnel, actually, temporal difference would update the estimates already by nudging A, the, the estimate from the office to the tunnel by a bit, and then also adjusting how much it thinks it's going to take us to go home. So a little bit like what, we, what a human would do. A human would go to the tunnel, you know, got, got to the tunnel late, and you mentally say, okay, you know, given that I got to the tunnel late, maybe I'll get home like even later, or maybe I'll take the similar time to get home. But the lesson here is a human would then say, at the tunnel when you're late, overall my trip time should be increased. And that's what TD is. Let's revisit reinforce.js. In the dynamic programming 
version of the grid world visualization. We know that what we do is we do one step of policy evaluation where we go through all the states and we find the value of the states and then we update that policy based on that value estimate. Then we evaluate a policy, we update the policy, etc. and then eventually both the policy and the value estimates would converge to optimality. In temporal difference, on the other hand, this is slightly different. So what you need to do here is you need to actually change this to SARSA because we're thinking about SARSA. The next thing to notice is we now have this yellow dot here. What this yellow dot means is this is the agent. And so because we don't have the model of the environment, we can't actually sweep through all the states and update our policy or evaluate our policy or do anything like that. What we need to do is to have the agents take actions according to the states and explore the universe and see what states come up and then learn as you go along. So if you toggle TD learning here, temporal difference, you can see that the agents represented by the yellow dots is going through the states and you can see that it's updating both the estimate of the value of it being in particular states. As you can see in the top left corner, the value estimate is currently minus 03. And you can also see that it's updating its interpretation of what are the best actions to do in a particular state, as you can see represented by the arrow. So one of the things you can notice is, for example, here in this square, if the agent lands on this square, the reward is 1. So the value of this square is very high. Similarly, the value of getting to this square is also very high because this square means that you're one action away from a high value reward. The other neat thing you can see that as we started talking about this, the agent was simply exploring everything. All the cells were white and it doesn't really, it didn't really understand what was happening. Whereas now what it is doing is it has actually found a way to consistently and very quickly get to the state where it gets a positive reward, i.e. here, and it's very smartly avoiding all the states that is giving it a negative reward. And if we actually scale back the exploration parameter here, we'll see that it only takes the shortest path to the reward, and that's it. You can also see here that the policy is actually very optimal. When the agent starts from the top left corner, it goes all the way down, and it follows this path, and it is quite optimally going to the square, the only square in this environment that gives it a reward. 